From the classroom and into the studio and back to the classroom, this is ESL Today, broadcasting from Anne Arundel Community College in Arnold, Maryland. And now, from his studio in the basement of the Science Building, here's Kirk Palchewski. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of ESL Today. I'm Kirk Palchewski, and this is episode 74. On today's program, we will get into effective speaking techniques, specifically persuasive speaking techniques, that and much more right here on this edition of ESL Today. All right, welcome back to the program, everyone. As I said during the intro today, we will get into effective speaking techniques. But before we do that, let's get a check on the weather. All right, taking a look at our local forecast from Arnold. Tonight, we head out to the campus of Anne Arundel Community College, where the current temperature is at 55 degrees under clear skies with a chance of precipitation at 0%. Winds out of the west-northwest at 3 miles per hour. And then tomorrow, Saturday, 73 degrees with p.m. thunderstorms, chance of rain 80%. South southwesterly winds at 15 miles per hour. On Sunday, 60 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Chance of rain 60%. Winds out of the west at 18 miles per hour. That's a look at your local forecast. Now let's go to our health segment. Hello, Dr. Discretion with you in studio. Did you know that it is nearly impossible for some people to attain a flat stomach? Even if you're very thin, your internal organs are inside your abdomen. The flatness of your stomach, in many cases, depends on your genes. So you must ask yourself, should I wear Levi's or Jordache? <laughs> this is Dr. Discretion saying live healthy, live comfortably, and live long. All right, thank you, doctor. And now... As promised, we are going to get into effective speaking techniques, so without any further delay, let's go to the classroom. Effective communication techniques, the power of persuasion. Persuasive speaking techniques, let's review them, shall we? Repetition, facts, statistics, analogies, and logic. Let's look at uh, occupations and professions that use persuasive speech. Today we will focus on politics. Among the 25 top political speeches of all time is Barack Obama's speech that he gave at the Democratic National Convention in 2004. His speech made the case for putting aside partisan politics and bringing Americans together. Here's one quote from his speech. We worship an awesome God in the blue states and we don't like federal agents poking around in our libraries in the red states. At the time of this speech, Barack Obama was a young senator in Illinois. The primary purpose of this speech was to speak in support of the Democratic Party's nominee, John Kerry. The secondary purpose of the speech was for Obama to introduce himself to the country. He succeeded in doing both effectively by using persuasive speaking techniques. The speech is titled The Audacity of Hope. You can see it at this address. Donald Trump, the nominee for the Republican Party in the 2016 presidential race, has given an enormous amount of speeches in the past several months. You could classify all these speeches as persuasive to one degree or another. Now, obviously, Mr. Trump is using persuasive language to attract as many voters as possible. Not so different from Barack Obama's speech in 2004, Trump is trying to bring voters from both parties together. He's doing this by declaring his stance on a number of social and fiscal issues that tend to resonate with factions of voters from both parties. Trump often uses short phrases that will stick in the mind of the listener much easier than a long-winded diatribe. He will repeat these phrases, sometimes in rapid succession, to drive home a point. For example, we are getting killed at the border in trade. And that's our show for today. For all of us here at ESL Today, this is Kirk Palchewski saying thank you for joining me. And I look forward to seeing all of you again next time right here for the next edition of ESL Today. <laughs>